Over the weekend, the wonderful Chelsea Sexton reminded me of an article from 2009 in which a team of researchers from UC Davis in California had stated that the cost of battery packs would add nearly $15,000 to the price of a new electric car when compared to an internal combustion vehicle by 2035, while hydrogen fuel cell vehicle technology would cost about $5,500 more on the list price when compared to the same vehicle in the same time frame. The idea that hydrogen would replace petrol and diesel as the prominent fuel choice for the future, not electricity. It was a prediction that now seems terribly dated some eight years on. Back then, battery electric vehicles were seen as expensive and impossible to turn a profit on. They had small battery packs and limited ranges. And it was a time before the Nissan Leaf, Tesla Model S and Chevrolet Bolt EV. It was a time before supercharging and a time before 200 mile electric vehicles were anything more than the dream of a few car buyers. Yet today, electric vehicles and the battery packs inside them are far more popular than hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And despite having a far higher energy density than current lithium-ion battery cells, several orders of magnitude more, hydrogen fuel cells haven't managed to gain an appreciable market share. But why? It's a question I'm asked a lot, and as someone who's focused more towards electric vehicles than hydrogen fuel cell technology, I'm often accused of being biased. And I guess there's a risk that this video may also seem that way, but know that I'm trying to be as objective as possible here in my response. There are many reasons why battery technology has overtaken hydrogen fuel cell tech, such as the cost of building hydrogen fueling infrastructure and the whole, where do we make hydrogen in the first place? But the first thing I'd like to tackle in this video is the simple fact that fuel cell tech has a handful of engineering issues that haven't really been solved yet. You see, while the basics of a hydrogen fuel cell stack are, on paper, pretty simple, the reality of building hydrogen fuel cell stacks isn't. At the moment, for example, the automotive hydrogen fuel cell stacks found in the Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan are partly hand-assembled due to the complexities of the design, which contributes a huge amount to its expensive price. You might think, too, that the pure platinum used in most fuel cell stacks also puts the total price up, since it costs upwards of $30,000 per kilogram, versus $20 or so dollars per kilogram for the lithium carbonate used in some electric vehicle battery packs. But but because there's a whole lot more lithium carbonate used in a long-range electric vehicle battery pack, just over 60 kilograms in a battery about the same size as a Tesla Model S 70D battery pack, and a small amount of platinum, about 30 to 40 grams or so, used in hydrogen fuel cell stacks, the two numbers are surprisingly close. Despite this, however, fuel cell stack construction has yet to benefit from the economies of mass production that battery packs have, and that means they take far longer to produce, and they cost more too. Had this issue been solved before battery energy density and longevity issues have been solved for electric vehicle batteries, we might be having the opposite discussion. But for now, it seems that battery is here for the long term. The other major issue with fuel cells, cooling. Battery packs, unless they're some exotic types such as liquid sodium, don't produce a lot of heat because they're pretty efficient at turning chemical energy into electrical energy. Fuel cell stacks, like internal combustion engines, are far less efficient and produce a lot of waste heat, requiring large radiators to keep them cool. Now, don't get me wrong, fuel cell systems do have their advantages. For example, unlike batteries, they can lie dormant for a number of years without degradation to the system, perfect for backup emergency power. And they can be quickly refueled, more quickly refueled than batteries. But aside from the technical challenges affecting the production of hydrogen fuel cells, the other benefit that batteries have had in their favor for a long time is their ability to be refueled wherever there's power, be it inside an electric car or inside a grid tied energy storage product, battery packs aren't fussy where the power comes from, or how the power is made. As long as it's electricity at the correct voltage and current, power can be put into or taken out of a battery pack with ease. What's more, once the source of power has been put in place, be it a solar panel array or a wind turbine, that battery pack can operate whenever it needs to. There's no requirement for anything to be brought to the pack for refueling. A hydrogen fuel cell backup power system requires regular fuel deliveries, or a hydrogen production facility which, be it electrolysis or natural gas reforming, is in itself an incredibly energy inefficient process. Is there a world where both systems can coexist? 
You bet. Hydrogen is the perfect range extender for a plug-in hybrid vehicle, replacing the internal combustion engine with a fuel stack to provide long-legged capabilities when a large battery capacity pack isn't practical. But the rest of the time, batteries have the edge. And unless we see a technical breakthrough that challenges all of the issues I've outlined above, it's the way it's going to stay. That's it. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.